Crew making history seemingly at every turn or at least every couple weeks here as they advance past Rayados in CONCACAF play just weeks after doing the same to another big boy out of Liga MX in Tigres with both of those second legs, by the way, away in Mexico. Guys, we can hit the big picture for both sides of this thing in just a second, but let's start with kind of last night, what we thought of the respective performances from Columbus and Rayados. Well, I was not surprised by that Columbus performance. We knew that was a great team. That's the current Major League Soccer champs. But at the same time, I was not surprised by that poor performance from Rayados de Monterrey. Yes, this is a very talented team. Yes, they put a lot of confidence in this manager. But this manager and this group of player, uh, players have over and over failed to perform at the highest of levels come crunch time. And this was crunch time for Rayados de Monterrey. All credit to the crew because this is a great team. They know exactly what to do, when to do it. They understand their philosophy. So all credit to them. And at the same time, disappointed by Rayados? Yes, but we used to see this from them. You guys asked me last week, I told you, I don't trust this Rayados team. Mm. They did what they always do. They buckled, they folded in the most important moments and at home. Let me give the Leverkusen of Ohio some credit here. <laughs> that team, that performance was ridiculous. Now, what I mean by ridiculous is they get scored on opening 10 minutes. They are flying. They are flying. It looks like Rayados doesn't know what's going on. Rayados gets a goal and all of a sudden, it looks like Columbus doesn't want the ball. It looks like Columbus can't find the pockets. Aiden Morris doesn't get on the ball. Darlington Nagby, who seems always so confident and fluid, not on it, doesn't want it. And then they get their goal. They kept pressing, they fought, they defended, they scratched, they clawed, they get their goal. And it's emotional paralysis for Rayados. And what we're used to seeing from Mexican teams, the dominance they have over Major League Soccer teams in the second legs was the opposite. Ohio's Leverkusen, the Columbus crew, Wilfred Nancy's team took over. It was on display. If you look at that second goal, it was more than 13 passes, more than a minute possession against a star-studded, rich roster like Rayados, and then the dagger. And once that dagger came in, I'm talking about that Diego Rossi goal, it was over. Mm. Guys, from a Rayados perspective, I got to look at that Andrada play because there's a lot of things we can say about this team and maybe the, the, the organization as a whole. But if he doesn't make that mistake in that moment just before the half, you got to think that we might be having a very different conversation here. And it's such a stupid mistake, right? Not just from the goalie. Obviously, end of the half, you're up one nothing at home. Not a place to be messing around. But what do we know, guys, about Columbus? If there's anything anybody knows about Columbus is they're going to try to press the living hell out of you. So why would Rayados be doing that? They're either, they're either making dumb mistakes on the field yeah. or they're not very well coached. And we may get to Tan Ortiz and his future in just a little bit, man. But for Columbus here, I mean, they played beautifully, Herc, right? But they also, to your point, held their nerve. They went down early here. And that's when you expect historically for us to see the meltdown of the Major League Soccer team in Mexico. And they do the exact opposite. They do what championship teams do. They, they score a goal in the important moments, just before the half, just after the half. And in the second half, guys, they put this game away in such a kind of devastating fashion. The Rayados fans were leaving. They were they were leaving the stadium with 10 minutes to go in the game. <laughs> they so, were fighting each other. Yeah, it was, they were it was fighting. crazy. They were fighting each other. It was crazy. So I, I think we just have to tip our caps here to a, a brilliant, brilliant performance from the Columbus crew and a really tough team. And it's not a fluke, guys. We've talked about it before. They gave up a, a trash goal against Tigres early on. Could have melted down there, didn't in advance. They gave up a, a, they were what, down two goals with 15 minutes to go in the Eastern Conference Finals against uh, FC Cincinnati last year. They yeah. don't melt down. Like, this team plays beautifully, but they are mentally tough too. And that, to me, um, really sets them apart. Let's go big picture then on the crew, boys, since we're talking about them. What is the significance here? Either for Columbus, or if you want to take it down the MLS route, of Columbus being able to beat two of the biggest spending teams in Liga Amekis, back-to-back -back in a real, not League's Cup, a real international competition. I love that he said that. I love that you said that because that's where I'm going with it. I'm going to take this big picture Major League Soccer. There's been a major hit 
in MLS's credibility down south when it comes to this tournament. Oh, look, it's not on your home soil. Oh, look, it's not your Mickey Mouse tournament. It's an actual home and away series. And look what we're doing to your teams. Look what we did to Philadelphia. Look what we did to New England. This is your level. This is the best you have to show for yourself. It was taking a major hit in credibility down south. This gives it some credibility. No, nay, this gives it more than credibility. Now they understand that there are teams that can not only compete but that can downright embarrass you like mm. Columbus did. Mm. I disagree. No. Oh, okay. I disagree. I think this is a great win for Columbus. I think this, That's what I said. this is fantastic for the crew. It doesn't mean that now every time a major league soccer team will go and play on Mexican soil, this will happen. This is the exception to the rule. Mm. The rule is the opposite. And I presented to you guys this, the stat, I think it was last week, when we were talking about these matches. Every time a major league soccer team had to face a series home and away against mm -hmm. Liga MX, they only advanced 7% of the time. Yeah. That is still the rule. This was the exception. Mm -hmm. This was an amazing team, very well coached, playing as a team. That was, to me, one of the biggest, the biggest differences between the crew and Rayados. The crew plays as a team. Rayados, a bunch of individuals, but that so far haven't been able to prove that they can play as a team. But let's not get this confused. This does not mean that Major League Soccer now has Liga MX is numbered. Nobody said that. Well, you were implying no, that no. a little bit. You were implying that Absolutely a little not. bit. So, yes, tip of the cap to the, the crew, hit. but this is the exception to the rule. There's Liga MX still every dominates year, the every series. Every year there's an exception to the rule that reminds people. Not every year. People, every year. No, not, not every yeah. year. Seattle, not every year. Toronto, LAFC twice mm, every year. Yes. Still Tigres, Leon, yeah, they won at LAFC. But there's a team that shows you that they can compete. This season, this tournament, the way things were going, that wasn't the case. How many teams, how many MLS teams do you think are able to do what the crew did, did this season? Go and beat Tigres at El Volcan. Go and beat yes, Rayados at BBVA. Nobody's Bebe arguing with you on that. I'm telling you that MLS, Major League Soccer, took a hit in their credibility they with did. this tournament. Yes, they did. That's all I'm they saying. Did. One they team, boys. And Columbus showed that one team. One right. team. Yeah, one one team. team in yeah. MLS yeah. that could do this. That could do this. But they are an MLS team. Now you got to give them some credit but there. But every year, every year it's one team. Every year, every ML, every but year. It's not every year MLS that one team, team beats Tigres and Rayados. This is let's let's give this its due, Herc. I think we got to give this its due. This is a. LAFC Cruz Azul, B Leon, and Did LAFC win it? Did LAFC win it? No, they didn't beat Tigres. I'm sorry. That's the one I, I, I lied on. They didn't beat No, it was Tigres Toronto. Team of the day. Toronto beat American Tigres the a same yes. tournament, and then they lost to no, Chivas no. in the final. LAFC as well. They beat Cruz Azul. They beat America. They played the final against LAFC. Remember in Orlando? Uh, yes, the bubble. Tigres. Yes. No? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, correct, correct. But neither here nor there. What I'm trying to tell you is every year there's one team that at least raises the flag. This year, until Columbus did it, mm. it was a clean sweep. And it wasn't only a clean sweep, Seb. It was embarrassing score lines. 6-0, yeah. Philly in El Estadio Hidalgo. You had a, a crazy, I don't even know what was the final score of the New England-America game. And America played, I don't even know what it was, but it was embarrassing score lines. They took a hit in credibility and Columbus crew bought it back a little bit. Yeah, I think we're witnessing a historic team, whether they win the CONCACAF Champions Cup or not, because we've seen teams go down to Mexico and survive. We've seen maybe teams go down to Mexico and what you guys are talking about, get a result necessary to advance. We've never seen a team go down to Mexico against one of the big boys like this and ping the ball around in the second half. I mean, that was that was luxury, luxury stuff from the crew. And I don't think it's an if. I think it's a when they beat Pachuca. We're going to have to real have a real serious talk about this team being oh. one of the best, the best maybe uh, in MLS Easy. history.